There are countless new features in Premiere Pro CS6. I'm just going to uh, highlight some that I think are particularly significant in this release because they're things that really stand out. There are lots of different keyboard shortcuts and some tweaks and changes to the preferences, but these are the things that I think uh, really jump out at you. And an obvious starting point, of course, is the new layout. If you've seen an earlier version of Premiere Pro, you'll be used to, well, actually, I can go back to it. Look, I can choose here in my workspace menu under the window menu I can choose the CS55 layout and here's how it used to look and in fact not that much has changed in the new version in fact if I just turn on the preview area here that's what you would have seen if I switch over now go back to my standard editing layout there we are and I'm just going to remove the preview area so this is what you get now Essentially, this is just a cleaner workspace. It's got less clutter, less going on, and more space for you to concentrate on editing. Now, of course, I'm working here on a 1280 by 720 pixel display, and that's so that you can watch these videos on all sorts of different platforms and you get a pixel for pixel playback of what I'm doing. You'll be working, I hope, on a larger display, but even on this reduced screen size, I can fit everything in with the new layout. It's just a way of starting out cleaner. The timeline itself has been updated as well, and there's not that many differences, but I particularly like the new navigator. You'll notice that the uh, previous navigator that was good, but a little bit dinky has gone and now we've got this uh, slider navigation control at the bottom of the timeline which is also a zoom control check it out fantastic i really like this it's much easier to click on much easier to interact with and you've got the same control on each of the program monitors so if you're working with really long footage you can zoom in and get more fine-grained control of your playhead and this as well is a special request that I was putting in for a long time at Adobe. And we've always had this work area, which is a bar used to identify areas that either you're going to render when you've got special effects, or if you're going to export, are you going to export the whole sequence or just the bit under the work area? I've never personally seen the point of the work area because it doesn't do anything that in and out marks can't do for you anyway. In and out marks are used to select a range of time. So in CS6, under the panel menu for the timeline, we can turn off the work area bar. And in fact, if you look under the sequence menu, we've got uh, render entire work area as an option. If I turn off the work area, now this says render into out. This is fantastic. So all of the functionality is dynamically updated in the interface, and you can just get rid of the work area if you want to. These panel menus, as they're called, are on every panel in the interface, and there's a lot of goodies hidden inside of them, so do check them out. There are many more enhancements for trimming in this release. And again, a massive request from me for ages and ages is the inclusion of JKL trim. Now, the J, K, and L keys can be used for playback, but here, if I just go into trim mode, I can use J to play backwards... There we go. Now, this might not look smooth on your screen, but it looks smooth on mine. And when I pause with the K key, you see there it's updated and trimmed the end of the clip. This allows you to play through your edits and trim as you go. You can jump from an assembly edit down to, let's say, a second phase rough cut in one pass. This is something that I think only historically Avid Media Composer had, and now it's inside of Premiere Pro. Fantastic. There's a new color grading application included with the production premium suite now called SpeedGrade. And SpeedGrade is available under the file menu. You can just finish your edit and then choose send to Adobe SpeedGrade. Now this is a round trip. It's not dynamically linked in the sense, for example, that After Effects is, but it does give you a really high-end uh, finishing application for doing your grading and color correction work. The audio has been worked on a little bit as well in uh, this version of Premiere Pro. So we now have a new kind of audio track. We used to have stereo and mono and 5.1, but we now have adaptive. And what adaptive allows me to do is target specific tracks for output, or rather, I should say, I suppose, channels. I can target um, submixes or the master track. But if I click here, this is actually a button, and this allows me to specify for each 
input source channel. In this case, I've only got uh, channel one, channel two stereo audio. But if I want to, I can target a specific track. So here, if I say just go to output one and I play, going again. there you go. You can see on my master, I'm just getting channel one. And if I go back in, I suppose I can reset this. Click OK, and we're going back to stereo. This actually allows you to combine source channels onto a single output channel. And that means you have to be a little bit careful about level, because you can get some, some compound volume in there. Ready and light. There's also a new kind of audio track called standard. And standard just allows you to put both mono and stereo clips on the same track. And it just automatically updates the controls accordingly. We've also got a new image stabilizer. Now this was previously only available inside of After Effects and it was a really lovely feature, the warp stabilizer. It's now been incorporated into Premiere Pro CS6. It's very, very easy to use. You just drag and drop the effect on. And again, this might not be so smooth on your monitor, but this is the original with the effect on. Nice and smooth. Doesn't look that impressive, looks like a Steadicam shot, but take a look at what it looks like without the image stabilization. That's the handheld original. So if you've got shaky footage, it's just perfect for quickly and easily giving you a smooth shot. It compensates for the fact that the camera might be moving as well as wobbling. There's also a separate rolling shutter fix. If you're shooting on DSLRs, you can get some distortion of the picture because of the way the shutter works, you can quickly drag and drop an effect on. And again, this used to be in the warp stabilizer in After Effects, now it's in Premiere Pro. We've got a new hover scrub mode as well in the bin. This is absolutely wonderful. Here I've got a zoomable thumbnail. See, I can go really big if I want to. And uh, let's have a look now. I can just hover my mouse. I'm not clicking, I'm just moving the mouse across. And effectively, this is turning the thumbnail into a mini timeline for the clip. I've been using this setting up this project and it's really, really good. It dramatically speeds up the way that you can access and familiarize yourself with your media. You can even select a clip and use JKL playback on it. It's wonderful. There are new audio meters as well, which look kind of similar to begin with, but look down here. We've now got a solo option. So if I play some video up in my source, I can solo an individual track. You just could not do this before. And it's a, it's a major thing because particularly for professional uh, or broadcast video, very, very commonly your channel one, channel two audio will be completely separate. And this way you can work with or at least monitor uh, one channel or the other. And there's new controls for selecting which channels of your original audio you're going to work with. There are lots of playback enhancements as well. Uh, for example, here I can press play, there we go, and I can just go off and uh, start browsing the web and, and maybe um, go on my social network sites and announce that I'm now playing video. And you'll notice that the timeline in Premiere Pro doesn't stop playback. And this applies when you're going into um, effects controls and various other parts of the interface. Overall, the experience of editing with Premiere Pro is more fluid now. Also, the GPU acceleration, the CUDA support from CS55, has now been expanded to incorporate OpenCL. So if you're using a MacBook Pro that has OpenCL support, you're going to be punching the air and whooping for joy, or at least smiling uh, with satisfaction, because you're now going to be able to get all of that GPU support working on your machine. And there's, there's so much more. We've now got a new multicam. Uh, the multi-camera now has uh, multiple layers. You can work with, oh, at least 16. This is a, a sequence with nine layers. It's fluid and responsive. But one of the major criticisms up to this version was that you were limited to four angles. No longer. Now you can work with lots and lots of angles. And another big request from me for Adobe is the introduction of adjustment layers. Now, if you're familiar with working in Photoshop, you'll recognize adjustment layers. They are an effect that you apply to a layer, or in this case, an, a segment, through which you see items below. So here I've got a simple color correction effect that I've applied to the adjustment layer. If I turn off visibility for the layer, you'll see the original color of the clips underneath. This is fantastic because it allows you to use a whole bunch of new workflows for managing your special effects.
And also, we've now got new marker support. Now, there's a new application included with Production Premium and the Master Collection called Prelude. And Prelude is a an application for ingesting uh, multiple media types and conforming them and tagging them with markers. And when you bring that media into Premiere Pro, you'll see the markers. These are temporal markers. These are ones I've added to the timeline. You see the text goes in there and you can see the duration of the marker in its own little panel here. And then down on the clip itself, if I add a clip marker, you can see I get the text as a little display right here. This is just a way of making markers more functional, so they're not just little icons that appear along the timeline. There are many, many more enhancements here, there and everywhere in Premiere Pro CS6, but those are the ones that really stand out for me in this release.